Hey everybody, it's Dr. McVeary here with another video on using text-based discussion and text-based analysis to increase reading comprehension in your elementary classroom. And in our last video, we covered different kinds of discussion techniques. Um, and we talked about how really the goal is to assess the use of textual evidence um, within how they are applying their text-based discussions. But what kind of evidence do you need to get? And that's what we're going to cover in today's video. How to unpack the Common Core State Standards, both the Reading for Information and the liter and Reading uh, Literature for Information Standards, to see what kind of evidence should we be looking for in our text-based discussions. And this is also a great tool because this is how you unpack objectives if you were to say write a lesson plan. So let me share my screen real quick and we will then go over um, how to uh, look at the Common Core State Standards. Now, oddly, the Common Core State Standards website is down right now. Um, so I have pulled up the crosswalk from on the Connecticut State website. I'm going to show you that real quick. All right, so let me just make this a little bit bigger. You know, and here we're looking at um, the anchor standards are broken into anchor standards, and that's where you should be at the, the end of high school. And what they said is, okay, this is where you should be at the end of high school. They worked all the way back down to kindergarten to try to figure out where you should be. Now, when you look at the anchor standards, that's high school. When you look at a common core state standard for a grade level, that's a grade level expectation. It is the end of the year expectation. So interpret words here, interpret words and phrases as they are used in text, including determining technical, connotative, and figurative meaning, and analyze how specific word choice shapes meaning or tone. That's what you have to do by the end of high school. When you start off in kindergarten, to get there, you need to ask and answer questions about unknown word in the text. And when we look at that standard, you know, we can really break that down into what do they know and do? Like skill, knowledge, and skills. Nouns and verbs. You know, so for knowledge, a student needs to really know different question techniques, questions, question types. Right? Um, when they need to be able to answer questions. And ask questions. They need to know what a text is. Got to remember, it's kindergarten standard, so you might be work, working a little bit on um, on concepts of print still with some of your students. So they have to have a firm understanding of print awareness and concepts about print for knowledge, um, and then be able to ask and answer those questions. Now, but when you go up to, let's look at what, what it says here for first grade. You know, now it says identify words and phrases in a story and a poem that suggest feelings or appeal to the senses. All right, so now we can see what's the difference. What's the delta between the knowledge and the skills between kindergarten and first grade? You know, there we have, we know what question, we know what test, we need to answer them, but now for this one, we need to be able to identify words. Identify feeling words. So that means we have to have feelings, a vocabulary feeling words. All right, they have to have that knowledge to be successful on that first grade end of the year expectation. Um, and then they have to then, you know, talk about, they may need to know what a poem, the difference between a story and a poem. So the delta of story and a poem. You remember a lot of poems are stories, but not every story is a poem. Um, they could, and then they might need to be able to, you know, appeal to the senses. So then you know what their senses are. And talk about how those, identifying those phrases. So it's really like just being able to identify. So how would I do this? Now think about it. You're having a text-based discussion with your students. You want them to identify the senses. You're doing a read aloud. What if they had paper cutouts of the nose, the ear, the eyes, the tongue? And they held them up when they said, and I bit into that juicy hamburger, and they hang up, hold up the tongue. Or, you know, 
for you saw sand for vast miles and miles, and they hold up the eyeballs. That's a way like they're that's not disgusting though, but they're identifying. If you want to have them identify those, you put them in a small group. So maybe you have a center time after that book. And the students are then going around and reading and identifying senses, and you can sit with them and you can listen to that discussion. But the evidence that you would need, you can unpack the knowledge and the skills to write an objective for a, you know, a first grade class that was working on identifying phrases in a sentences. Um, and you could say, you know, in a small group. Categorize phrases by their senses. Well, the phrases and the senses, that's a, that's a weird word there. Phrases by senses invoked, um, by sense used by all. Something like that. You know, what am I doing? All right, well. Can I measure this? I could listen to their discussions. Well, they could listen to discussions and see if they're identifying phrases. I could then look at this chart. Like if I gave them a chart and they had all five um, senses on it, and and I gave them, you know, because it is first grade, um, so I might have the phrases cut out for them ahead of time to save time, and I had five boxes for them to fill out. You know, they could move and cut them and, and paste and move the senses around. And I'm having a discussion about this, but that's how you really pull apart the objective. Let's look at another one. Let's go to reading for information. Um, the, the standards aren't really that different. They were just being more explicit because we weren't reading enough information on text in um, schools. Uh, you go back to the Jen Durkin studies from 78, and it was like, what was it, like seven minutes on informational text in, in, pre, in schools. It hasn't really increased better. But let's go down to that same one, uh, craft and structure. Because remember, we did craft and structure. This is one that really, dip, like, if you're going to find any difference um, between literature and informational text, it will be on the craft, the craft and structure strand. Um, and so when we look at that cluster, Look at kindergarten here. With prompting and support, ask and answer questions about unknown words. All right, but so it says with prompting and support. So they have to know with it, you know, so no, do. All right, you have to know, you have to monitor understanding in a sense. Monitor understanding. That's, you know, we talk about comprehension strategies in older grade levels, but how? I mean, it does take prompting. That means you are using an adult or using some kind of, you know, smart tutorial. But how do you know it's an unknown word if you're not monitoring your understanding? Um, and so this is, you know, so this is what I need to be able to know is basically, um, you know, clear, how, um, I don't know what they need. Questions, they would need no questions in a sense. Um, this is a harder one because the students weren't used to this skill yet in kindergarten, um, so it does involve a lot of that prompting. But they'll have to know, you know, what is an unknown word, known and unknown. What's that mean to know something? To know a word. What does that mean? Um, strategies, you know, think about like looking at pictures. Um, they really in kindergarten wouldn't be dissecting the word or taking it apart in suffixes and prefixes because these are usually CVC or CCVC um, short first well, one or two syllable words. So you wouldn't really pull them apart unless maybe you're doing compound word lessons. Um, but that's how you could then get to that kindergarten objective and then you could write the prompt. Working with a teacher, the student will ask a question about an unknown word. They don't have to answer, you know, they have to answer it and then like think about their strategy. So they ask a question about the unknown word. What, how are you as a teacher going to gum that out during a discussion? So you could have a class discussion where it's like put them in small groups and try to figure out what words mean together. But that's where I, I believe in the teacher picking up words from kindergarten on. I'm not a big fan 
of students they finding their own words um, in the book. A, you don't know if they're going to pick the right ones. Uh, we'll talk about this when we get to vocabulary. Um, or B, you know, they might pick words that aren't necessary, or some students might say that I know all the words, and then they're not doing any vocabulary work. Um, so you have to really be careful of that. But let's see how it bumps up to first grade. Determine the meaning of words and phrases in a text relevant to grade two topic or subject area. So they have to determine the meaning. Now they've lost the support. Right, so words are phrases. So think about what's the delta. So if you're going to that second grade standard, now you can write your objective. What's everything they would need to do by the end of that grade? Well, you could do one objective on determine the meaning of a word in a subject area text. You could do one on phrases. You could do one on um, you know strategies to identify those. Like um, you could put them in small groups and have students pick out what are the five most important words in a in a um, subject area text and try to define them in small groups. Great way to have text based discussions. So but the key difference, let me stop sharing my screen here. Really, the key um, difference. Is where you put your objectives on. We call them the anchors in the objectives, and that's how that's how you could take a the Common Core State Standards in either reading for information or reading for literature and design an objective for text-based discussion or reading comprehension. 